Hey everyone, Grant Alexander here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm making a tent bed for my son. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. The majority of this bed was made with 1x6 pine lumber. The sides are cut to 77 inches and the front and back are 39 inches. I wanted to add a bit of style so I made these cutouts on all of the pieces. I used my jigsaw to cut them out. And then used a small drum sander to clean up the corners. I added a 1 8 inch round over to all the pieces just to take the edge off. I'm using pocket holes to assemble the bed. They're a nice and quick solution for DIY projects like this. The head and the footboard both get 8 pocket holes drilled into them. As I don't have a fancy pocket hole jig, I usually clamp the entire thing to my workbench. To hold the bed slats, I added a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. It runs almost the entire length of the sides. I clamped it in place and then off camera added some screws. The bed slats were made from random boards of hardwood I had in the shop. They're all different types of wood and I wasn't sure of what the species were, so this is a perfect project to use them up. All of the boards were rough and required dressing. I first started by face jointing the boards to get a flat reference surface. I then edge jointed the boards. Then they all went through the planer to get them to a consistent thickness. I wasn't worried about the final thickness, I just wanted them all to be the same thickness and they came out just over 3 quarters of an inch. Next up I cut them to their final width. I used the edge jointed side as a reference and I cut a bunch of 3 inch wide boards. To get the bed slats to the correct dimensions, I used the headboard as a guide to mark the length and then cut them using my miter saw. All of the bed slats got a 1 8 inch round over as well. I'm going to be screwing the bed slats in place so I set up a simple jig on my drill press to countersink some holes. Assembling the bed frame was pretty simple. I added glue and screwed everything together. I'm using one and a half inch wood screws to screw the bed slots into the frame. To get consistent spacing, I'm using a scrap bit of wood between the slats. And of course, the entire frame got a 1 8 inch round over as well. If you're looking for a super simple toddler bed, then stop right here. But if you want to take it to the next level, keep watching as I turn this into a fun tent bed. To get the angles right, I temporarily assembled the tent poles using clamps. I wanted the cross pieces to be about 58 inches in the air. I was then able to mark where I needed to cut out. Because the marking was on the outside, I grabbed some scrap of pine lumber and transferred the mark 3 quarters of an inch inwards. I used my bandsaw to cut this out. I then put the tent poles back in place and marked out where they crossed. Using a clamp and a scrap of wood, I set my speed square to the same angle as the marks. I was then able to use this to guide my circular saw. I have the saw set at half the thickness of the boards. Once the outside edges were cut, I came back with my circular saw and made a bunch of cuts in between. I was then able to break off that wood, which is really satisfying. And clean up the recess with a chisel. A little glue and some clamps and the tent poles have been made. Off camera I rounded over the edges with my router. The cross piece is made from some 2 inch square pine. 
I used the planer to clean up the faces. And again the edges got a 1 8 inch round over. I assembled the bed temporarily in my garage to see if it needed any cross support. Spoiler alert, it did. It doesn't fit up the stairs fully assembled, so I'm only using screws to put this together. I used some clamps to hold the cross piece in place as I screwed it in. So I want to add some supports to this to stop it from racking. And I'm trying to figure out the best way of measuring the angle so that this sits flush. I've got out a little uh, protractor here and I have lined up so that I can see that I cut a 15 degree. This should make it flush. So I'm going to cut this side and then I'll cut the bottom and hopefully it'll come out real nice. To cut at 15 degrees, I needed to add a scrap of plywood to act as a fence. If you're not comfortable with this, find a different way to make this cut. Once the top was clamped in place, I was able to mark the bottom. I used my bandsaw to cut along the marks, and I used a Shinto rasp to add a bit of an angle to the piece. I pre-drilled and screwed the pieces in place. To cut off any of the excess, I used a flush cut pull saw. The entire piece got a few coats of water-based polyurethane. I'm using a queen size bed sheet for the tent fabric. It was a bit too wide so I had to cut about 12 inches off. I marked two lines with a chalk marker, one at 10 and a half inches and one at 11 and a half inches. The first is where I need to cut and the second is where I will line up the hem. These special scissors are called pinking shears. The zigzag pattern they cut is designed to prevent fraying. I'm using my mother's old Singer sewing machine. It's from the late 60s and still going strong. The blue tape is there to try and help me line up my stitches. So I've got it temporarily attached with clamps just to see how it turned out after the sewing. I'm going to be installing some snaps and in order to uh, reinforce the bits where I'm going to be installing it, I'm going to be adding some leather squares, just some scrap leather I had laying around and I'm going to uh, use some contact cement to attach it. This is water-based contact cement and it's pretty simple to use. You put it on both pieces and let it dry. Once it's dry, you put the two pieces together and they're instantly bonded. I bought a snap kit from Amazon and it came with all the tooling I needed to install the snaps. The first piece cuts a hole, then you put the snap cap and socket in place. You use the second and third pieces to set the snap. You just gently hammer it in place until it's nice and tight. I repeated these steps for the seven other snaps. To install the stud side of the snap, I lined up the tent fabric and then drilled a pilot hole. I then screwed the snap in place. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description to the snap kit I used. And now it's time for my favorite part, the reveal. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's a little tent bed. Hey, what do you think of your new bed? And watch, we can open it up this way you can get in from this. Hey. Yeah. 
Now what do you think? <laughs> All right. What do you think, buddy? I hope you enjoyed that video where I made this tent bed for my son. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. I really like how this tent bed turned out, and I think my son's going to love camping amongst the mountains in the background. Until next time, cheers, and have a great day.